Ready? Yep. Hey everybody and welcome back to Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal. And today with me, Dr. Heather. <laughs> so we did a video a while back where we reacted to ASMR. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> At my apartment in Atlanta. It was interesting, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been getting a ton of requests to explain what we do in a physical and what we're looking for when we do certain things. So, since I have a special guest today, I thought we would do that. Perfect. Perfect. Glad I could help. Do you want to be the doctor or the patient? The patient. You were quick to answer that. <laughs> I'm well, I have to say, you're Dr. Crystal. <laughs> so I think going over an entire physical and like explaining everything is going to take a really long time. So I figured we would break this video up into kind of multiple videos. So today, we're just going to do here to here. Okay. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, I'm on the same page. Yeah. That's why we're wives. <laughs> All right, so it's settled. Today, we will start with the head. Are you ready? I am. Let's do it. All right, Dr. Heather, are you ready for your physical? I'm ready. So usually when someone comes in for a physical, we are gonna talk a ton first. The most important part of a physical is the preventative care and making sure we cover all that. So before we even got to this part, we would have already talked about her medical history, allergies, update your vaccine history, all of that. Anything to add? If they've had any updates to their medical care, medications, surgeries, etc. Yes. So we're going to pretend all that already happened because what you guys asked about was the physical exam. And so we're going to get down to it. So I'm going to do what I do and I'm going to let Dr. Heather add in and let me know if she does anything different. And every doctor probably does their physical just a little bit different. So this is just going to be what I do. You can rate me on a scale of one to 10. <laughs> So I, one of the most important parts is just taking a look at the person. There's a lot you can tell from taking just a general look at the person. And usually at the top of our physical exam, we'll write something like alert, no acute distress, which is easy to tell. Like she's, she's alert. She's talking to me. She doesn't look like she's struggling in any way. <laughs> All right. So we don't have any medical instruments here because we're not in a clinic and I don't have any for my house because that would be a waste of money. So we, um, we have this GoPro tripod to pretend to be our instruments. So I'll just explain what they are. I usually start off, like I said, by just taking a look at the person. And then after that, I just kind of start from the top and go all the way down. I don't generally look at someone's scalp or anything unless they have any concerns. But technically, if you're being really complete, you could look at the skin on the person's head and make sure there's not any lesions, moles, anything like that. So usually I just start off with somebody's eyes because that's the first thing that I'm looking at. And so um, just taking a look at them first, making sure that they're level, making sure that their pupils look equal. Um, pupil is a little black part in the middle of the eye. So after that, I will usually shine the light in someone's eye. So I'll shine it in this eye and then I'll shine it in this eye. And usually I'll do each eye twice. When you shine the light in someone's eye, their pupils should get smaller, both on the side you're shining it in and the other side. And so that's why we have to shine it twice in both eyes, because the first time I'm looking at the eye I'm shining it in, the second time I'm looking at that eye. And then we have to make sure it's the same on the other side. All right, cool. So the tool that we use to look into your eyes called the ophthalmoscope. So next, the doctor might get really, really close to your face. It has a little thing on the top that you can look through. You have to get really, really, really close like this. And the point of that is to look through somebody's pupil and to see the back of their eye. And so what we're looking for back there is the vessels. We're looking at your retina. There's a few, few different things we look for in the back of your eye. Comments on that? It's a really hard exam that takes a lot of practice and it's good. I mean, we try to practice as much as we can in medical school and residency, but ultimately if we have any concerns about the eye or the patient does, we will have an ophthalmologist further evaluate the eye. It's Which is a really doctor. difficult exam. When I try to look in the back of people's eyes, I always turn the light off because it makes it easier to see. Yep. The last thing I usually do with the eyes is check to make sure they have normal motion. So there are a ton of muscles around the eye, so we want to make sure both of your eyes are able to move in every direction. And so to do that, pretty easy. 
person's facing forward, they'll keep their head still, and I can just tell her to follow my finger. If anybody has any specific concerns, I'll do a little more in-depth exam so we can do like visual fields and that kind of stuff. That's not something I usually do as part of my general physical. Do you? Yeah. Okay, good. The next thing that I usually do is move on to the ears. So I still have the same little tripod, but the tool we actually use to look into the ears is called an otoscope. Obviously, everything that we're doing, we're just looking first. So I'm gonna look at the outside of her ear and make sure there's nothing weird about it. Her ear looks normal. Good job, normal ears. I have, I have big ears that stick out, so I'm self-conscious when people look at my ears. But anyways, so when the doctor looks into your ear, they might pull on it a little bit. I always pull their ear because it kind of straightens out that canal inside and makes it easier to see in. Why does the doctor pull on my ear? So what am I looking for in the ear, Dr. Heather? You are looking in the canal, you're looking at the tympanic membrane, aka the eardrum, uh, make sure um, there's no change in color or fluid that shouldn't be there, any holes. Am I protecting your ear too hard? No. <laughs> the issue is, especially when you have uh, a respiratory infection of some kind, it can be pretty painful. So we never mean to cause pain, but it's just extra sensitive during that time. So Dr. Heather's ears look fantastic. Yay. So next, I usually move on to the nose. As always, I'm going to start off just by looking at it. Her nose is perfectly symmetrical. Which is why I married her. It's just a beautiful nose. She's joking. You didn't marry me because of my nose. That's true. Okay. So now I'm going to look inside her nose. And so basically when I'm looking inside each nostril, I'm looking to see is that septum nice and straight or is it deviated? A lot of people have a deviated septum. Either that's just the way they were born or they had a previous injury. There's also things in there called nasal turbinates. And I'm looking for any swelling of those. They can swell if you're sick or if you have bad allergies or some people just have big ones. can affect your breathing. Other things that can be in your nose are like polyps. So I was thinking. Boogers. So to do that, I usually use the tool that we use to look in the ear. And it has like a little tip on it. I'll just we get a new plastic. Tool. A new plastic thing. I'm not going to stick your earwax up your nose. Or maybe I will. So I usually just push up the tip of the nose a little bit and just kind of take a look in. Don't stick it too far in. I don't have a light on this, but I think her nose is fine. And usually I would be higher up on an exam table, so yeah. All right, we're moving right down. So the next thing is the mouth. So take a look at the lips. This is when we have you say ah. And people, I notice a lot of people when I have them open their mouth and then I say, say ah. They just think I'm like wanting them to open your mouth, but when you say ah, it actually opens your throat so that you can see the back of your throat. It elevates the palate. So Dr. Heather, open your mouth real big. Say ah. Uh, Lift up your tongue for me. Good. All right, so when I am looking in someone's mouth, there are a ton of things I'm looking at. So obviously you're looking at the back of the throat, make sure there's no redness, make sure there's no drainage can drain down from your nose, like the back of your nose, because it's all connected. Uh, looking at the teeth in there, making sure there's nothing crazy wrong with the teeth. Obviously, that's mostly a dentist's job, but if there's anything crazy, we might address it. Um, taking a look at the tongue, taking a look at the sides of your mouth. What else? Tonsils. Tonsils. Looking in someone's mouth is also a good way to assess their hydration status. And so if I'm worried someone is dehydrated, not drinking enough water, I can tell by looking at their tongue and what we call their mucous membranes in their mouth. I'm clearing my lips. And see them. And lastly, to finish up today's lesson, the neck. So you guys should know this by now, this far into the lesson. We are gonna start off by looking, looking. Okay, so you have some big old vessels in your neck and I'm sure that you guys know that. You can feel your pulse here. But sometimes when there's issues with the heart, because the heart is so close, we can see almost like a pulsation here in the neck in these big veins. And so that's something that we're looking for in everybody just when we're taking a look at your neck. You can see it better usually if they're leaned back or, you know, halfway laying down. But that's something that we're always keeping an eye out for. And more common in older patients. Right. So me working in student health, that's not something that I'm going to routinely see. Even in older people, it's not something you routinely see. Right. 
So next, I'm going to feel her neck. And so start off by feeling up here and kind of feeling down the front. What are you feeling for? I don't know, Dr. Heather. What am I feeling for? Seems like you're trying to feel if I have any lymph nodes based on the distribution. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. And so lymph nodes are in a lot of different places in your body, but the ones in your neck can get swollen if you're sick. Some blood disorders, cancers can cause the lymph nodes to get swollen. So we're always checking what we call the anterior cervical chain lymph nodes and the posterior cervical chain lymph nodes, and those are the ones that are in your neck. And so we're feeling for any hardness, any enlargement, especially if multiple of them are enlarged. It's not uncommon for people to have large lymph nodes when they're sick. A lot of people get really nervous when their lymph nodes get large, but we see it all the time. The other thing that we routinely feel for in people's necks is their thyroid. And so most people have heard of the thyroid. A lot of people don't know that it's actually in your neck. And so a lot of times you're not able to, to even feel it, but if it's big, you can feel that it's enlarged or if there's any nodules or anything like that in it. And so the best way to do it is to feel where it is and then have the patient swallow. When, when I learned in med school, they always said, give the patient a little glass of water and like have them swallow. Yeah. I don't know where they're getting these glass of waters that are just like supposed to routinely be there, but I'm just like, swallow your spit. Come on, swallow. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Heather, your thyroid feels amazing. Okay. Anything else with the neck? So I'm going to hold off on any musculoskeletal exam for now because that would just complicate this whole physical, but if we were doing a truly thorough exam, I would check the range of motion of her neck and everything, but we're not going to do that right now. Dr. Heather, did I miss anything? Well, actually, one thing that we didn't talk about was as you're working your way down, you should always be looking at the skin, especially the head neck area. It takes a lot of sun exposure. You don't want to miss any skin lesions that could be potential cancers. Good call. Yeah, for sure. I think that pretty much covers it. I think so. Yeah? Are you sure you don't have anything else to add? I'm sure. <laughs> but if you have any questions, you should comment them down below. How would you rate my physical? It was good. How many out of 10? 10 out of 10, recommend. <laughs> yes! <laughs> If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. We hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And, and we'll see you next time. Now that you know I'm a happy. <laughs> Sorry. This is great lighting. We look good.